another lot. You're going to see a whole lot of magic. Look at this trick and that trick. And when he says it's not a lot, you'll agree such a lot. Meet the man who excels, old Daniel. We've got a good audience here this week, and we hope that you and they are going to enjoy a very good magic show. A magic show in which our jury here will watch very closely to make sure that we don't cheat. <laughs> but what it is, I want you to take off any item of jewellery that you have of some value. The more valuable it is, the better. Um, because, who knows, we may be able to leave the studio faster than they can. <laughs> <laughs> take off anything at all, all right, and pop it in. Yes, that's fine. If, it, if it's of value to you, whether it's sentimental or... Um, is that it? <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's great. That's... Um, what have you got for us? A bracelet. Yes, that's nice. Was it a present? Yes. Oh, good. And, and what is this? Do you want a lot? Do I want the whole lot? Yes, yes give it the whole... Here. Yeah. <laughs> you hold this. You, no, no, not all of oh, No, no. Oh, no, my ancestors didn't wear black masks. This is... Um, <laughs> this is rather nice, isn't it? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> we should get a few shekels for this lighter. Now, <laughs> it's rather nice. You are going to sleep. <laughs> Put it in there. That's nice. Was that a present or did you buy... That was a present. A yeah. present also. That's it. That's and my granny's ring. That's your granny's ring? Look after it. Look after what? My granny's ring. Oh, I thought you meant your granny. Yes, all right. <laughs> well, we have to look after her granny's ring. I don't know why. Well, well, granny didn't. Give it to you. Now, now, <laughs> over here we have got a special kind of, of chest. And you're now very interested in this jewellery casket because all your goodies are going to go inside it. Before they go inside it, would you stand up and try and undo the lock of the jewellery casket? OK? That's it. Now, if, if you try... I mean... You can have a good turn, but don't strain it, because if it doesn't work, you pick the wrong key. All right? doesn't work. Okay, now take that key with you. So, that, yes, and sit down. And, um, yes, and, and you just take any one of those. That's fine. Just un undo that with the key. Um, it's upside down. <laughs> no more clues. Now. <laughs> doesn't fit. Oh. Okay, sit down. Hold the key up high. Hold the key up high. Madame. Thank you. And you come here, and any, we've got three keys left. Any one of them at all, just try it in the lock. Oh, fantastic. Doesn't work, huh? No. Okay, sit down there. All right. Madame. Thank you. And you come here. Just, um, <laughs> go on. That's it. Does it work? No, it doesn't. No, you've got the wrong key as well. All okay, right, you. so you sit down there. That leaves one key for you. Okay, now if you take that key and try it in the lock, I've got news. That won't work either. <laughs> Pardon? You thought it was right? Oh, no, no, no. There is a very good reason. Hold your keys up. There's a good reason why those keys do not work. The reason is that I've got the only one that does. <laughs> Which is here, you see? That's how I tell the difference. Now, this key here, uh, it's time for you to make your debut. Would you stand up, sir? Certainly. Your name is? Martin. Martin. Yes. I see. I used to take your dog powders. <laughs> of that. And pop it in there and see if it unlocks the thing. That's the idea. All the key. That un unlocked it? Amazing. No yes. trouble at all. It's the right key. That's why there's no trouble. <laughs> now, I don't want to touch anything. Just rest it on the velvet. And it's important that I don't touch anything because people think I'm a suspicious character. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. <laughs> Would you take all of the jewellery now and place it gently inside the casket? No, no need to... No, don't tip it. You'll smash the glass on her brooch. <laughs> if you just... Um, uh, would you, it's not really glass, is it? No. Don't worry, no. <laughs> Nothing what? Glass yes, never mind. What are you going to do now? I'm going to close the lid and lock it. Before you close the lid, place the velvet on top of the jewellery to protect it, in case anything untoward should happen. Put, okay. Yes, just put the velvet on there. Yes, fold it inside, otherwise it's going to be very hard to shut. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right? Now we've done that for you. Um, would you like to close the lid? Good. And would you like to lock the box? That is absolutely fantastic. Then, now put the key in there, but keep the ribbon and uh, don't put the ribbon in. Just put the key in. That's fine. Keep the ribbon. It sort of suits the whites of your eyes. <laughs> now, you just pull that up. All the keys are up, 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 up. Now, we now know that this key in here fits that lock of the, right? Checked by yourself. Right. We know that none of those keys fit, don't we? Yeah? Because you all tried them. Good. I want you to drop your key in there. 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 See? 
Now, I know you're all interested in this because you have got jewellery inside. Would you like to just give them a quick swish around and take out any key? No, oh. with your hand, that's all right, yeah. But take out any key at all, fine. Would you do the same? One key and one key, hold it up in the air, hold it up in the air, you do the same. Here we have a choice, the keys are coming out, left, right and centre, fantastic, down to you, my love, take the key, that's super. Now we have got, you have chosen a key each, fantastic. And now it's all down to Martin. Right. Because do you know what you're going to do? No, I don't. Well, I don't. <laughs> the sale over there and take any one of the keys, any one you like. Now, having taken the key, could you do it quickly? We're only on 35 minutes. Right. And if you just, <laughs> just drop it in the slot. Now, the little slot now means the key that you chose has gone inside the box that you locked. Uh -huh. Right? Yes. So slowly it will dawn on you who's going to take responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it? Yes. Right? Another key. Any key at all that you like. We've got uh, four left. Away you go. Have we got four? I don't know. Four, five, I don't care. In there again? Another key? You're doing it very well, Martin. That's fantastic. Do you want to change your mind? <laughs> go on, you're working yourself now. That's fantastic. So, get over there, take the key, and unlock the box, and give them all back their pièces de jewellery. Could you come round here just a little, and just unlock the box quickly now, give them back the jewellery, because this is what we're waiting for. We want you to give them back. <laughs> If you could give them that, open the box. No, it won't open. Pardon? It won't open. Wrong key. Is it that... won't open. You have blown the trick. <laughs> OK. If it won't open, we shall put it in there as well. In other words, you have goofed. <laughs> well, some tricks you win, some tricks you lose. Sit down. Next on the programme, we have got... <laughs> I'd love to do that one time. No, but, but really, what has happened here is, in fact, a little kind of minor miracle. You were given five keys to choose from, and it didn't make any difference because none of them fitted, all right? We then dropped in to a glass the one key that did fit, and you all were given a free choice, all right? A free choice. Now, some people think that the people that do this kind of thing are psychic. I think they could be magicians, because the one key has been sitting there in that glass, and it has been on view to all our audience here and to all our jury here, and we haven't touched it at all, all right? You, you took the blame for a lot. Stand up again, Bar Mr. Martin. And just take, take the key from there yourself, remembering that it was the key left by all the members of the jury, and just place it in there. And if that unlocks that box, this audience is going to go absolutely wild with applause. <laughs> no? It doesn't? <laughs> well, there goes the applause, I guess. <laughs> Are you turning it the wrong Sorry. way? Sorry. <laughs> Well, we've got to give these uh, pieces of jewellery back. And while we do that, let me explain something. My first guests this evening are recognised amongst the circus profession as the finest exponents on what is known in the circus world as the Russian bar, a sort of a flexible vaulting pole. And if you, like me, are fascinated by athletics and gymnasts at the Olympics, watch this next act very closely. Because, ladies and gentlemen, you'll never see anything like this again. From the Polish state circus, the Kozaks. <laughs>
now we're going to see Lydia Kojak jump from a flexible bar into the air and back to a flexible bar with a double backward somersault on the way. thought that was amazing now a forward somersault with one and a half twists and I should point out that a forward somersault is just that much more difficult than the backward somersaults you have so far seen to drop into the Bunko booth, where this week I've been joined by a lovely lady. Her name is... Denise. Denise. Now, Denise, as you know, in the Bunko booth, we always give the person that joins in some money, all right? So there's a pile of yeah, money, all right? Five. This particular one came from really out west, where the medicine man, um, who used to be travelling around, more like a showman, selling these patent medicines. You, you've seen in the cowboy yeah, pictures, yeah? yeah? And he would go around, and, and, and this was his favourite bet. He would have a load of pill boxes, which we've got here, all right? And, and they're empty, nothing in them, um, open one, yep. And you can see it's just a pill box, all right? Nothing clever, otherwise I wouldn't let you look. <laughs> and, and he would pop the pill in. Now, it's very simple. Having popped the pill in, all he would do is then rattle it, yeah, yeah. to show you that the pill was in the box. Now, if he was to offer you a bet where he shuffled all these up and you had to keep your eye on the one with the pill in, that wouldn't be much of a bet, would it? No. No, not really. So, what he would do is he would split it into two piles like this. So, there were eight in that pile and eight in that and give you what is apparently a choice of either pile, a free choice of either pile. And if you can find the pile that's got the pill in, and that's not easy to say at this time of night. <laughs> if you've got a pile that's got the pill in, you win. In other words, you take that fiver and place it on the pile you think has got the pill in. And if it is, you have won a fiver. Well, I'm confident. Can I put ten on? Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> of course you can. And that means that I also have to put ten on. <laughs> now, Denise. Four, twenty quid. Now, Denise. Yes. You think the pill, therefore, is in this pile. I do. So, let's have a little test, all right? Well, they're not in there. It's not in there. It's not in there. And, Denise, it's not in there. Okay. And an interesting thing has happened here, Denise. There, that one. That's the one with the pill in, all right? And you have lost your £10 that you invested. Now, because of the psychology of the way this works, it's good, this. Yeah. Oh, you like this. Not a lot, but you like Will. it. Yeah. <laughs> you see, what I mean? The man now has you in a position where you've lost money. You are anxious to win back the tenner you just lost, aren't you? Yes, I'll yeah. have another go. You're going to have another go? Yeah. Of course you are, dear. So, you drop it in, you see the psychology is working, and he shakes it, and there it is inside, let you have a look, right? Yeah. Show the cameras so that maybe they can see it all, because that's important, right? Now, having got it in there, and, and he then um, mixes it in with the others. Now, because there's only a few now of these um, on the table, is he waving at you? He mixes them up. <laughs> <while you're not. laughs> <sighs> Suddenly I feel more confident. Now what happens? <laughs> what happens now is he's got you in the position where you've lost ten pounds and you are anxious to win it back. So you don't walk away, you put more money on. Which pile now, only four aside, do you think has got the pill in? And would you place the money on the appropriate pile? 
Well, I lost on that one over there. I'll try five on that one. Five on that one over there. And I'm sorry to tell you that even though I put the fiver on to make it look like you're going to win, which is more psychology, mm. over here is the, um, the, the pill. Um, <laughs> ah. Well, first she puts ten quid on, um, and, and it would appear that you have, in fact, won. Because one of these, uh, don't, not that one, this one is the one with the pill in. And you have won five pound back of your original fiver. Now, um, that's a bit sad now, because the whole thing would appear to be going wrong. Now, really, you are being conned. Because although this is the one with the pill in, it is helpful to him to let you win one go. Yeah. Because you now are confident. See? Feel That's a bit right. cool. Yeah? Feel a bit cool. So when he mixes these up like that, all right, and mixes them all up again, you now feel like you're going to win the other fiver back and maybe a bit of his money. See? Yeah. So you have a bit bigger bet, all right? And is that a spider? And this... <laughs> now, this is... It's the only way I can make her look away. Now, what you do is you now place some money on, on one side. It doesn't matter which side you place, provided you find the pill. Spotting the pill is important in this day and age. Right, I'm going to go ten pounds. Ten pounds? I'm trying, that side. Ten pounds on that side! That's the spirit, and I will put ten pounds on as well, because I like you. <laughs> I think you're a very good sport, especially as you have just lost. <laughs> all right? What you should have done was place your money on this one. That's the one that's got the pill in it, all right? Yeah. And now you are a little bit of money down, but you have won once, so you think you might win back, and you go for the rest of the money. The pill goes back in the box, all right? We close the lid on the pill box. We place the two pill boxes together. Now, for free, which is the one that has got the pill in it? For free. Yeah, great. So now he has to distract you. He does it in a subtle manner. <laughs> Which at least gives him a chance. So, for £10, oh, you've got £15 left. Which one has got the pill in? And I'll throw the rest in, and if you get it right, you win the lot. OK? Which one's yeah. got the pill? Uh, that one. <laughs> that one. Now, do you want to change your mind? No? no yes? No. no. OK, you stuck with it, because this is the one that is empty, and in fact, this is the one that's got the pill in it. And there's the pill inside the box, and I'm sorry you have lost that, but don't worry, it was an old trick done by a medicine man a long time ago, and in a fairly recent musical, there was a song that I, I think talks about the prize we're going to give you. It's a spoon full of sugar to help your medicine go down. Oh, that's lovely. Jimmy. Join the magic set in the haunted ballroom.
it's not a long step from a haunted ballroom to the world of Victorian mediums and spirits and seances, and that's where we're going right now. We've got a man with us tonight who's going to recreate the atmosphere of those Victorian parlours where people used to sit with their hands on the tables and things would go bump in the night. And we've lent him two members of our jury who have been brave enough to face these spirits, and I'm going to leave them and you in the capable hands of Glenn Falkenstein. At the turn of the century, a very famous magician named Willard the Wizard toured the southern part of the United States in his own tent show. And in that show, he featured the spirit cabinet, which was, was to become a classic of magic. In early years, the medium was his wife, Joy. She died in 1953, and then he trained his daughter in mediumship, Frances Willard. Francis brings with her some cotton cloth, uh, and I'm going to give each of you gentlemen a piece of cloth. There's a piece for you, sir, uh, and here's a piece for you. And now, Francis, would you please put out your wrists? I'll take your piece of cloth, and would you do as I do on the other side, please? Just bring the cotton cloth up and make two knots, if you will. And would you make the knots for me, please? Yes, just uh, make two knots and make them nice and tight. All right, a little tighter than that. You know, don't be afraid of cutting off circulation. All right, good. All right, let me just pull that for you. Very good. All right. Now, behind your back, please, Francis. Now, would you step over here, please? And would you just watch over my shoulder? I'm going to make two more knots. Again, as tight as the knots that you made. All right, let me make a locking knot onto this. And now, I'd like a piece long enough so that we may nail this uh, to the board a little bit later on. We'll take this about like that and put a, a knot right about there. All right, let's put one more around her neck. And I'd like you, sir, to make two knots. Yes, right there, but not quite as tight as you made the first knot, all right? <laughs> uh, and make a locking knot on it, please. All right, you can make that tight. I don't want her to be able to slip it over her head, but I do want her to breathe. All right, that's fine. And now, Francis, would you please uh, step inside of the cabinet, please? And I'll ask our gentleman friends to walk around the rear uh, of the cabinet, because in this bucket, you'll find some hammers and some nails. And I'd like each of you to take a hammer, please, uh, and, uh, and some nails, okay? Uh, and uh, put some nails uh, in uh, the cotton cloth. Please put a piece, uh, a nail here, a nail here, uh, and would you, sir, uh, put a nail over on this side? Now, we do have a camera from the back so that they can watch you nail, putting nails in. All right, good. And all the way in, please. And a nail over here. Very good. Put lots of nails in. Good. And a nail over on this side, please. All right. Make sure there is no way that she can escape so that the camera in the back can see. All right, that's fine. Uh, you just put the hammers and nails back. Let's just put them on the floor. All right, now, on the stage, we have two chairs, and I'm going to ask our gentleman to sit uh, on those chairs. Just sit right down. You'll notice those chairs are strategically placed uh, so that you can see that no one either enters or leaves that cabinet, especially from the rear. And now, it will be necessary to mesmerize the lady. Francis, I want you to sleep. Your eyes are getting heavy. They're getting heavy. I want you to sleep. Good. Into the cabinet, I'm going to place some objects, some bells, some tambourines. Good. And now, let me pull down the curtain. And I'd like you to watch closely. Because many people say that they see spirits at the top of the cabinet. A 
Let's see if we can make some spirit contact. Spirits, are you there? Watch. The top of the cabinet. Watch your head. Gentlemen, walk in that cabinet, please. Just walk right in, very quickly. Walk right in, make sure that she's still tied, still nailed to the board, and I know what you're thinking. You're thinking perhaps there is some way for Frances to make these manifestations herself. It's not so, and I'm going to prove it, because I'm going to ask one of these gentlemen to sit in that cabinet and hold the lady. <laughs> no, 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 not you, sir. Would you like to sit in that cabinet? Okay, good. Let me take this chair, place the chair right inside. All right? Now, sit right in and face the back wall, please. All right, now to make sure that Francis is not moving or making any motion at all, I'd like you to take your right hand and put it on the lady's head, please. Nice and firmly. Her left hand now on the lady's... Wait a minute. This might be a little better. All right, good. Are you nervous? A little bit. I don't blame him. Uh, I'd better blindfold him, you know? If he were to see something and it were to frighten him, he just might hurt himself running from that cabinet. All right, let me just place this around your eyes. Very good. Okay, now, let's see if we can make some spirit contact. Spirits, are you there? My goodness. All right, let me just... Would you just... <laughs> Down here. Okay, can I, may I borrow your jacket? Yes, please, thank you very much. Let's pull this down. Okay, and we'll pull this right out of the way. Thank you very much, sir. All right. Now, watch this. Spirits, take the coat. Be quick. You're going to see something you're not going to believe. Gentlemen, would you walk in that cabinet, please? Check the jacket. Go walk right in. Make sure you can't get that jacket off. No way possible. Make sure the wrists are still tied, still nailed to the board. Neck tied, nailed to the board, are they? Thank you very much, gentlemen. Take your seats, please. Now, watch this. Spirits, take that coat. Be quick. Here we go. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Francis Willis. Exactly. Walk right in there, Jack. Walk right in. Good. Okay. Let me just lift this up all the way around. Make sure that she's still tied, still nailed to the board. All right, check those hands thoroughly. I'm going to cut her free right here. Let's just snip this, all right, and snip this side. Now look at the neck. See, the neck is still tied. Still nailed. Let me just snip this away. Good. Now, would you stand on this side? Would you, sir, stand on this side? Because I'm going to count three, uh, and we're going to wake Francis up. Francis, one, two, wake up, please. Good. There you are. Ladies and gentlemen, Francis Williams. Tonight, I'm very pleased to announce you're about to see a classic piece of magic performed with two of our jury members that are being looked after tonight by the very capable and lovely Mary Chipperfield. <laughs> the jury members, I should point out, are Fred. Hi, Fred. Are you okay, Fred? Yeah? Enjoying that? That's great. And, of course, Betsy. And they're going to take part in the world's most famous classic card trick of, of the rising card. Right, now, are either of you very interested in doing a card trick? <laughs> no, I didn't think so. But then, you know, but then we can't... Um, <laughs> we can't all be lucky. Now... This is a card trick par excellence. That's the, um, the, that, look at that. That's absolutely, hey. That's a custard pie. Seen a custard pie, haven't you? 
Yeah, of course you have. Now look at that instead of the custard pie. You're not really interested in this, are you? Well, I'll stuff it in your trifle. <laughs> Think I care. Right. Any minute now, he's going to be eating the rules of... <laughs> Will you not play with the props before we get to the thing? The ca... You do not dip snake baskets into your rice pudding. Right. <laughs> Here is a pack of cards, ladies and gentlemen, and we're going to shuffle the pack, and we're going to put the whole lot into here. Now, this is a top hat in miniature with a whole set of blocks in there as well. And what I'm... Pardon? Yes, in there. And what I'm... Will you not... What are you doing? No, you do not wipe your face. You'll make it sticky. The cards will not come up. Don't put the milk jug in the rice pudding. Right, now, what we do is we're going to have a card chosen here, and I want you to just take a card... Hey, Betsy. Betsy. Betsy, I'm over here. Watch me lips. Right. I want you to just take one card and one card only. Any card at all. That's the one. Right. Now, <laughs> she's taking a card. Uh, I wonder if you would do me a favor, Fred. You're into the apples already, eh? Right, okay. Fred's into the apples. Now, Fred, here's a pen. This should be good. Would you take the pen, Fred? Yeah, that's the idea. Good boy. Now, just sign your name across the front of the card in order that we can verify it later. All right? Have you signed it? Oh, that's very good. Yes, you've also signed my finger, my palm. <laughs> signed everything. I hope you at home saw what the card was. The card was the four of spades. Would you like to check that it, that is the four of spades? That's the idea. And this is an amazing <laughs> trick. We put the whole of the... <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't really do the rising card. Here, would you like to keep a souvenir? Of, of our evening together trying to do the rising card. And we will take the rest of the, the pieces of, um, that's fine. What do you got? There? Oh, gee. Um, this, this, look what I did. Um, uh, uh, to do is is wrap up the pieces of the handkerchief the pieces of the hand no we wrap up i'm still here we wrap up the pieces of the card in the handkerchief and we will do the torn and restored card trick um which we did not intend to do but still we're going to do it anyway now to do this particular trick where the devil are they oh there they are <laughs> it's not easy palming with a handful now we just there we are now now fred would you do me a favor okay would you keep hold of that Thank you. No, just keep hold of it. <laughs> this chick faces tigers and I'm lumbered with you. Right. Now you just... Fred. Fred, your apple is finished. The pieces are going to disappear from here and reappear inside a banana. Now you are not going to believe this. <laughs> what you're looking for? It's a trick with a banana. And what we do is we take the banana and the pieces vanish from here. Would you hold the pieces here? Thank you. <laughs> what you doing? No, it will not reappear inside a grape, Fred. Look, over here I've got a but Will you get off my banana? This is... What have you found? What the hell are you doing? You're eating the sweets now. Yeah. What? <laughs> now Fred is eating the sweets, folks, but don't worry. Any minute now, the card will rise from the trifle. Now, it will disappear. <laughs> will reappear inside a real banana. Would you hold that now, Fred? <laughs> you hold that. No, you put that down there. And you hold that there, right? This is the best part of the whole trick. Now, what we do is we take this banana... <laughs> Take a banana. You've eaten a banana. You've eaten the damn banana, Betsy. <laughs> Look at that. Well, I've got to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that in fact we did have a spare banana. And this was really insurance because I didn't think that the only kind you guys wouldn't eat was this. This is a plastic one. And inside this plastic banana, if I can take it out, is a. Um, it's plastic, okay? Plastic. <laughs> if only I could speak African, we could communicate. If I could talk to the animals. Inside there, there is in fact not only a banana, but wrapped around the banana, 
there is a card, and the card is, of course, the Four of Spades. Yes, Fred. And, and, and if you just give me that souvenir, you'll find it not, this corner not only fits, but it does fit exactly. Now, Fred, I want you to be honest about this. Is that your signature? <laughs> Paul Daniels is currently appearing in his own show at the Prince of Wales Theatre in London and he returns with more guests on BBC Two next Monday at the same time.